Today, we are wrapping up our series on those seasons in life where something has changed. Something has happened and things are no longer the way they were. The death of a loved one, the end of a relationship, a struggle with a child or friend, the loss of a job, an illness or injury, and the list goes on. Whatever the cause, you are no longer where you were and have not yet arrived to wherever and whatever it is the future has in store for you. You're kind of just stuck in the middle. And when you are stuck in the middle, it can be hard to find any sense of peace. We are going to close this series by talking about something that is waiting for us on the other side of those hard seasons of life. Something that could give us new perspective and purpose, as well as that peace we've been missing. Our scriptural focus for the day comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, where in the opening chapter he writes, Praise be to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of compassion and the God of all comfort in all our troubles. I love this image of God, an image that is filled with compassion and love for us. A God who is devoted to caring for us, not in some distant, far off way, but up close and personal. A God who's there to comfort us, not just in some of our troubles, but in all of them. And the word for comfort here is not some mild form of sympathy. It is representative of the deepest levels of understanding and empathy. It basically means that when we are hurting for whatever reason and in whatever way, God doesn't just see it. God gets it. God feels it. God knows our pain and God reaches out to offer a comfort that runs more deeply than words can describe. Now, just a quick side note here. When we're in trouble, we sometimes start praying for God to get us out of trouble, like right now. Heal me. Find me a job. Solve this problem. Whatever is going on, we want God to fix it ASAP. Those prayers are perfectly natural, and I get them. I've said them. But I wonder what might happen if our first prayers in such moments weren't for a quick solution, but were for comfort instead. God, comfort me in my fear. God, comfort me in my hurt. God, comfort me in my insecurity, my uncertainty, my brokenness. I think we sometimes confuse resolution with comfort. I, I know I do. Unresolved things make me uncomfortable. But sometimes things can't be resolved so easily. By praying for God's comfort, we might find ourselves more responsive to God's care throughout the journey, no matter where the journey may take us or how things might end up. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this in the context of finding contentment. In that message, I define contentment in this way. Contentment is when we are at peace, no matter what is happening around us. In my experience, this kind of peace is most accessible when we are in tune with and open to God's care and compassion for us. It comes when we allow ourselves to fall into the hands of God and be held there for a while so that we can experience peace in the midst of the storm. Now, here's where today's passage in 2 Corinthians gets really interesting. Praise be to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of compassion and the God of all comfort in all our troubles, so that. And we have to pause here for just a second. When you encounter those two words in scripture, it means there is a purpose to what we have just read, that it is leading to something important. Whatever happened before the words so that took place so that something else could happen. In this passage, that means God comforts us so that something else will come as a result of it. Now, at first glance, we might think the purpose here is clear. God comforts us so that we will have peace in the midst of our struggles, so that we will feel better about whatever it is that is going on. While that is certainly an important part of why God comforts us, it is not the only reason God comforts us. There's something more going on here. This is how Paul describes what is happening. God comforts us 
so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. We are comforted by God in all our troubles so that we can then become a source of comfort for others. After we have been through a season of life where things are hard, where we felt stuck and had little, if any, sense of peace, when we get to the other side of that, we are called to find ways that we can walk alongside others who are in those moments, to be the ones who are offering them comfort, just as we were offered comfort. Doing so is not only beneficial for the recipient of our care, but it is also beneficial for us. It can give us a new purpose, and it can help reconcile whatever situation we just went through by bringing something good out of a season of hardship. This is a big step toward restoring peace in our lives. Let me give you an example of what this can look like. For those of you who have not met them, this is Nathan and Sarah Paris. They are members here at Middletown Christian Church. This is their son, Jack. In May of 2017, Nathan and Sarah experienced one of the worst tragedies imaginable when Jack was killed in a car accident at the age of 18. In that moment, their life changed forever. When sharing their story with me, they said it felt like they were stuck in a nightmare and the idea of being able to move forward beyond it felt impossible. Nathan and Sarah described Jack as someone who had a smile that lit up a room and who lived life to the fullest. They also told me that in doing so, Jack would sometimes push the limits between good fun and getting into a bit of trouble. He loved driving and going out with his friends, and before leaving home, he'd often tell his parents he was off on an adventure, which left his parents wondering just what kind of adventure he was talking about. Shortly after Jack died, they found out what he spent a lot of his time doing, and it wasn't what they expected. In fact, they had no idea what he had been up to. Not long after he died, young people started sharing stories with Nathan and Sarah about things Jack had done to help them out when they were in need. They heard stories about him giving food to students who weren't getting enough and about him buying work clothes for his friends who couldn't afford them. He provided transportation for some teens who didn't have their own car, driving them to and from work or to school. He even snuck a couple of his friends that were homeless into his room some nights so they could have a safe place to sleep. Unaware that this was happening, Sarah said she couldn't figure out why they were going through so many Pop-Tarts. They eventually discovered that Jack had a list of young people in his phone that he was helping. He had a schedule for reaching out and checking in on them. Shortly after Jack's funeral, the school counselor called Nathan and Sarah and told them she was hearing stories about what Jack had been doing and wondered if she could have the names on Jack's list so she could make sure those kids had the care they needed. So while Jack could get a little off track every now and then, his adventures were not what his parents thought they were. Instead of getting into trouble, Jack was often helping people that were experiencing trouble and hardship in their lives. He never told anyone what he was doing because he wanted the people he was helping to know that they could trust him. As Jack's grandfather said at his funeral for Jack, love was a verb and he lived it. While these stories about what Jack was doing were life-giving for Nathan and Sarah, the journey was still hard. They were in that in-between time, not where they were and not where they hoped to be for quite some time. Then, after some time had passed, they got a call from their daughter, Leanne. She was teaching in a low-income school and was talking with her parents about the many needs of her students, which led her to say, I need a jack for the children in my class. That statement was the catalyst for bringing together an idea at the heart of which was finding a way to continue doing what Jack had been doing, to help young people who were in need. 
After some thought and exploration about how best to do that, the family started a foundation in Jack's honor. Called Love Big, the foundation exists to help advocate and care for youth, to give them a hand forward in life. Funds from the foundation have helped to buy clothes, sports equipment, school supplies, backpacks, and has helped with the purchase of cars. It has paid for youth to attend camp and now has a scholarship set up to help young people pay for trade school. It is a truly incredible story. It is also the kind of story that demonstrates the so that today's passage is talking about. The support and care the Paris family experienced during their time of need became a call for them to do the same. It gave them a new purpose and passion in life, and while it will never replace their son or take away the devastation of losing him, it has helped them in so many ways. And it is clearly helping others, just as Jack would have done had he survived. It is an incredible story to be sure, and I'm so grateful for Nathan and Sarah allowing me to share it with you. Those seasons of life where we feel stuck, not where we once were and not yet where we hope to be, they're hard. And no matter what might bring you into such moments, they are rarely a good thing. That's why when we are in the midst of them, we need the care of God and the care of each other. But at some point, we will begin to find ourselves as having been there rather than still being there. Not that our struggles may go away completely. They might not. But once we find that we are not camped out in the valley anymore, not living in between anymore, we are called by God who has cared for us along the way to care for others. We are called to do that for everyone who is still in the valley. If you've ever been in the valley and come through to the other side, I wonder how it is that God is calling you to help those who are still there. What is it that you can do to help bring peace, comfort, and care to those who are struggling? What is the so that story you are going to write? Maybe, just maybe. Maybe by writing that story, by answering God's call to use your experience in ways that can help others, you might find a new purpose in life. You might also find the peace you've been missing. Amen.